Hello, today let us look at one subsection of analytical reasoning or logical reasoning section which is the section of decision making. Decision making the first look of it gives you a small boring kind of a feeling because these are questions which are long, little niche, jargonized and sometimes call for a lot of meticulousness. These are not the questions where your flamboyancy will pay off. These are the questions where you need to sit sincerely, look at the question, go back to the set, look at the question again, go back to the set, multiple regressions and every time we have to start from scratch. Decision making is something which we normally do in life also. Say for example, if you are a part of an administrative department of a particular college, there is a particular CV that comes up and says that you know I want to come here for recruitments. The first thing that you do is look whether the person is fitting into the particular position or not. If he is fitting into a position, you go ahead forward the resume for further interviews. If he is a wonderful resume but not fitting you, you forward to somebody else and say that please look at this CV, he might be of fitting use to you. Sometimes he should be so bad that you might just throw off the CV and say this guy is not useful to me. Either which way, it is decision making because you are plugging out the most logical thing that you can do after looking at the CV. Let's look at a very similar example. Going back, this chapter deals with questions in which you have to decide upon the course of action. So the course of action has to be taken upon a candidate who has applied for a vacancy or allotment or a membership to an institution, keeping in mind the essential requisites and the data given for the candidate. The first example is very clearly put for any candidate who is applying for the recruitment of a librarian in the state university as on 31st December 93. So the date is given means there has to be some kind of a reference here. 31st of December 93. The candidate first of all must have four conditions here. He must have a master's degree in library science with at least 55% marks or its equivalent grade and a consistently good academic record. Second condition, he should have one year specialization in an area of information technology, archives, manuscript keeping, master's degree in an area of thrust in this institution. Third, have at least 10 years experience as a deputy librarian in a university. Fourth, bear an evidence of innovative library science and organization of published work. Now these are standard cases. If you get something as typical as this, it is textbookish to say yes. But there are exceptions. In case of a candidate who has a 15 years experience as a college librarian, the case may be referred to the vice chancellor. In case he has obtained less than 55% marks in library science, but has 13 years experience or more as a deputy librarian in a university, the case may be referred to the registrar of the university for his consideration. In case he has MPhil or a PhD degree in library science or information science or documentation or archives and manuscript keeping, but has only 10 years experience or less than that as a college librarian, the condition 1 may be waived based on the above conditions and the information provided against each of the candidates in the questions given below decide which of the following courses of action should be taken against each candidate say for example the first one we say Amit has master's degree in library science with 70% marks and with one year specialization in an area of information technology joined as a librarian in the Indian College on 22nd Jan 1977. He also holds a certificate of innovative library science in the college. If this is the case given, we understand that the candidate Amit fulfills conditions 1, 2 and 4 evidently. For the third one, he being a college librarian for 16 years, he satisfies condition 5 which is the first one of the exceptions. Therefore, the answer is E, which means the case has to be referred to the Vice Chancellor. The answer options given here 
are A, if a con candidate needs to be selected, B, if the candidate is not to be selected, C, data is inadequate, D, case is to be referred to the registrar and E, if the case is referred to the vice chancellor, that is what we've reached out to. If we talk about the second one, Rahul, an MPhil in library science has been a deputy librarian in some university since 27th August 1980, specifically given 80, so that means they are trying to indicate 13 years of experience. He has a one year specialization in archives and manuscript keeping. He holds the evidence of innovative organization of published work of the college students doing PhD. Given this case, Rahul Khanna being an MPhil satisfies condition number 3 from the exceptions and so the condition 1 is waived off. Then he satisfies 2, 3 and 4 very clearly. Therefore, he is selected and the answer will be A. Third case, Sanjay has been a deputy librarian in a university since 1973. He holds an evidence of contributing library service in the same institution. He has one year specialization in manuscript keeping. He also has a master's degree in library science with 53% marks. 53% marks. Considering this candidate, he satisfies fourth condition very easily. Being a deputy librarian for last 20 years, he satisfies condition 3 also. However, having marks less than 55, he violates the condition 1 and so the answer is D, which is the fourth option. Fourth example, Ramesh is holding a PhD degree in library science, has one year specialization in archives and manuscript keeping. He has been a deputy librarian in the Assam University since 11th April 82. He also bears a certificate of innovative library science in a public library for three years. For the given case, being a PhD that is satisfying those additional conditions, condition number three, so that condition at one is waived. He satisfies conditions two and four very clearly and being a deputy librarian for 11 years, he satisfies condition 3 also that is satisfied all the conditions he has to be selected from whatever that we get out of these four examples that we discussed about decision making is that it is a meticulous task it's a sincere one it demands a lot of regression of jumping back and forth between the question and the set but a sincere attempt at solving these questions will nearly put up 100% accuracy as far as the questions are concerned Best of luck.